This is a seed. A mongongo tree seed. It's come from the dry land uh, area of uh, Botswana. This seed can solve global problems. And I will tell you how. Uh, six years ago, when I was working on uh, the Botswana program with the Sun community, some call them the Bushmen in, the, in Botswana, I realized that they use these species for nearly everything. I said literally everything. They use it for food, they use it for firewood, they use it for body uh, care products, they use it for uh, medicine. But what I realized as well is just they don't grow the species, they just collect them from the wild. And that triggered me. I managed to get some of the seed in the lab to understand how they germinate, because that was the major problem. They don't uh, grow the species uh, in the wild. After a battery of experiments in the lab, I found out that you need a smoke solution to get rid of uh, the inhibitors that prevent the germination of those seeds. Then that technology, we transferred that back to Botswana and to the sun communities. And I'm proud to show you now the first seedlings of the Mongongo growing in the Kalahari Desert that I've helped with and then planted in Botswana. The story that followed up was quite uh, astonishing. From this simple example, but let me show you first the bigger picture. The forest landscapes Africa. Talking about Africa that is close to home and close to my heart. If we look at the recent statistics uh, published by the UN Organization of uh, Food and Agriculture, FAO, about the state of the world forest, have been just published uh, last year in 2011. You concent please concentrate on just the two last rows. The first one is uh, on you know, Africa and the total of the world. Four, over four billion hectares of the world is, co is covered by uh, forests. Out of that, you have less than one billion in Africa, which is about 17% of the world forest. But if you focus now on the loss of forest per hectare per annum, you find that out of the five million, over five million hectares of trees lost per year, nearly two thirds come from Africa. I will challenge, I'll explain that to you later, the word loss. Because if you look at the function of the forest in Africa, one third is used for production, the two thirds for different amenities, uh, conservation of biodiversity, uh, ecosystem services. And you look at the use of those forests. I would say forest is the only asset where you go in with nothing and you come up with products that you can get some money out of it. And we have seen forests used for uh, medicinal plants in the market to, to generate money. Forests have been used for firewood. Forests have been used for artwork. Forests have been used for cosmetics. All these put a lot of pressure on the forest. So that is why we have the reducing you know, amount of uh, the, the, the global forest. Now, what, if you look at these activities in Africa, people are pulling out some resources without replacing them. So they are creating a kind of negative balance in uh, the forest sustainability. There are some solutions. I just want to focus on one of the solutions uh, that we uh, are working on in the Q Millennium Seed Bank, which are just the seed banking. To take you through the process, First, the seed banking principle is just going out in the wild and then collecting the seed, like here we are doing uh, in Madagascar. These huge baobab trees, we try to get the seed. Despite their, sty their size and their, their stability, they won't stay forever. So we need to get the seed from them and then start the regeneration. Once we collect the seed, we just process them in country, and usually with the help of uh, these expert ladies, who know really how to clean the, uh, the seed properly. And this picture is from uh, Burkina Faso with a group of ladies uh, preparing uh, the, the seed. 
when that has been done, the next step would be to study the, mainly the germination of those seeds before banking them. And the top of seed we are talking about is nearly uh, over 99% of the world plant diversity, i.e. the non-crop species. The crop species make out of uh, less than 1% of the world plant diversity. Currently, with this work, after 10 years in operation, we have nearly 30,000 species in the gene bank that has duplicates at Kew Garden. Then you look at, again, some of uh, the repartition of uh, the distribution of the seed that we have collected in the gene bank. You blow it, you can see all the red dots are the provenances of the various species we have been collecting in Africa. So out of the estimate 51,000 species of the African flora, we already have nearly 20% of uh, you know, those, um, those seeds stored in the bank. Now, the plant-based solution is mainly based on studying the seed, knowing how to germinate them. We had three major projects where we capture the need of the community about you know, the important species for their livelihood. It's come close to about 1,000 species uh, from about 50 communities in Africa, in sub-Saharan Africa. And out of those 1,000 species, we already have studied nearly two-thirds of those species. And with that knowledge, we had to transfer the knowledge to the African communities. So we, the process we, we apply, we have um, uh, on our community-based program, we have four steps. The first step is just to meet the community, discuss with them, uh, record their wish list, the species they want to grow in the garden. And this is, for example, uh, in Ghana with uh, the cocoa farmers, or here in Mali with uh, the traditional healers group. After registering the, the, the need of the community, we go through a training process where we just turn seed into plants. And for that, we train the community to have their own nurseries, like here in Mali, this is in Botswana, uh, again in Ghana, where the uh, community look for their, their own species. After turning those seeds into plants, this is the community group in Kenya, where they just grow their, their, their own seedlings. Uh, here in Mali, or again in Ghana, where they just grow their own uh, specific uh, seedlings for, for, for their needs. The next step is the planting. And believe me, that is a big day in many villages when we come to the planting days. You can see women going out, taking the seedlings you know, in their bucket and so on for the plantations. Elder people, ladies, children will join in. They'll take the seedling, you know, bicycle and so on, and plant them uh, in, in their farms. Uh, personally, I've tried the last five years to be part of all those planting ceremonies and often dragging in me, even my, my family you know, to be part of uh, the, the tree planting. The, the fourth step in that community program, after planting the seed, we have to look after the seedlings. Often people forget that they just put the plant on the ground and then there's nothing that's happened. Uh, our results show that you need at least three seasons for the seedling to establish on the ground. And you visit those plantations later on, you know, the community will be pleased proud and then to show you what they have been uh, you know, growing in their farm garden. Uh, I would say this, is, uh, th this program is working. At the moment, we are working with uh, 15 different countries in sub-Saharan Africa. Forest is a big issue. We need sufficient seed for our atmosphere, for our need, for community need, for poverty alleviation. All these things, I mean, I think I'll, can come through uh, handling and managing the seed. And for the next step, I mean, the, the outlook is really how to scale that up because you're talking about uh, different problems and I think seed can be the solution of, uh, you know, poverty alleviation or climate change and, you know, global solution for different issues we have today. Thank you very much.